Everyone has a game or game series that makes their skin crawl, be it Resident Evil, Silent Hill, or any number of very easily defined horror games. I'm not much for the horror genre. I've never really been a fan of scary movies or spooky stories. While I've enjoyed the odd horror game, they've never been and never will likely be a staple in my normal gaming routine. There is one exception to this. Castlevania games are sometimes categorized as horror due to the supernatural elements. Some people like to take a look at the game design, enemy placement and level design, and they kind of use that to justify it as a horror experience as well. I've never really found Castlevania to be that scary. Or at least, I didn't think I did. But then I remembered back to an experience playing Super Castlevania 4. I had played Castlevania games before Konami's first SNES entry into the Whip Flicking series, and I really liked the supernatural enemies and dark atmospheres of the games. Despite the horror themes, they never really gave me the creeps or scared me. This was likely due to the limited graphics on the NES. They looked and still look great, but the experience just wasn't that chilling. When I finally got to play Super Castlevania 4, I was blown away. The graphics and sound are so good in the game, and at the time, the only thing that rivaled it, in my mind, was the great Link to the Past. Castlevania 4 was the most atmospheric game I had played up until that point. It's dark, haunting, and to a younger kid, kind of frightening. The SNES is capable of a better audio-visual experience, and the developers at Konami really did all they could to crank up the fear factor as much as technologically possible. The title sequence really gives you an idea of what to expect when diving into the game, with lightning cracks, spider webs, creatures scurrying about, and the incredibly creepy music and sound effects that accompany it all. The opening area to the game has a very slow and dark flow of strings playing over a foggy moat and a castle gate, while a skull rock formation overlooks your approach. After crossing a drawbridge that closes itself, you find yourself in a garden courtyard and immediately an iron gate quickly rises out of the ground. A creepy yet rocking track begins to play and your adventure begins. Super Castlevania 4 has effectively set the mood within just the first minute of gameplay. This game is going to use all the audio and visual tricks in the book to keep you on the edge of your seat. One of the more striking visuals for me as a youngster happens near the end of the first stage. When you lead Simon to a barn, suddenly a lot of dead horse imagery begins to appear. Horse heads lying on the ground come to life to attack you. After climbing the stairs to the second story, you are able to see what probably creeped me out more than anything. The pale, dead-looking horses lounging about in the moonlight. I'm not sure what it was about this visual that stuck with me and made me shudder as a kid. I remember being frightened enough by it that it kept me up at night, wondering what kind of creepy horse business they were plotting. Were those guys just regular white horses hanging out in an obviously dangerous and dead land? Or was it something more sinister, like the skeletal horse the end boss rides in on? Were they zombies with rotted flesh hanging off their bones? Were they plotting to come and eat little kids living in the real world? Something about the organ music playing in the excellent Simon's theme over a moonlit farmyard just stuck with me. This could be because I grew up in an area with a lot of farms and scary stories and urban legends about ghosts and specters surrounding farmland were always told around cold fall evenings. The visuals of the game were just real enough that my active imagination started running wild with how these dead horses could be real, and they could want to come and eat me at any time. The rest of Super Castlevania 4 is excellent, and has a bunch of great creepy things to take in. The music in the second stage just sounds excellent and fits the graveyard and swamp areas perfectly. The dungeon areas where half skeletons are rattling around in chains gave me a bit of a jump the first time I got that far into the game. The final areas bring back excellent renditions of classic Castlevania music tracks and are suspenseful with gameplay that rushes you but forces you to be careful and deliberate at the same time. All these parts of the game are great, but they just never stuck with me the same way that the horses in the first level did. Call me crazy, 
but they're always the first thing I think about when somebody mentions Super Castlevania 4. The game is excellent and a great one to play during this spooky Halloween season, and you shouldn't overlook it when lining up your horror games to play any October. Later. <laughs>